auto cabinet. You're going to take a one inch hole saw and you're going to drill a hole out the back. <laughs> out of the back of the cabinet and then 90 to your switch pipe coming in from the cabinet from the switch it's plumbed into your pressure tank with a one inch male adapter you got a, a one inch t a one inch 90 and this comes up to your pressure gauge you're gonna need the fittings for that t too as well this is the main shut off so on the back of your reverse osmosis cabinet you have your product line and your waistline i'm going to show you how to hook your product line to your tank what you're going to do is you're going to this is already like this you're going to hook your product line to the barb 90 you're going to drill a hole you're going to put your other barb 90 in there and if you don't have a step down bit you can always use a regular bit but you're going to have to wallow it out a little bit you just simply hook your product line to the tank at the bottom of your holding tank you're going to take the gray nipple that we've supplied you're going to cut it down to fit the size you're going to want a teflon tape and blue magic this and then screw it into the the holding the holding tank your drain line off the back of the reverse osmosis cabinet three quarters pipe glue it all in and then the drain pipe can run off the existing slab to wherever you want it to go, or you can plumb it into your existing dry well or drain. The downflow. The downflow, you're going to get a spare piece of three quarter inch pipe. You're going to want to go exactly to the bottom. This is going to sit at the bottom of your pump, so you're going to want to make sure you zip tie this in good. Okay? You want to be about three fingers away from the actual float itself. We're going to zip tie that in and then we're going to come back and cut the excess off. This is our bubbler option. I'm not sure if your package came with that or not, but this bubbler is going to get zip tied on this three quarter inch piece of pipe too as well. That way if you have any issues later on, These are the heat shrinks that were just got wrapped on with electrical tape that goes from your lead wire to your pump. A stick in the holding tank now and we're going to take an inch and a quarter hole saw and we're going to drill a hole in the top of the tank for the pipe. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut down the pipe to fit. About an inch left exposed because you're going to glue an elbow onto it. To make the cleanest cut for all the wires, you want to unscrew the Phillips head screws from the top of the holding tank. Float, the bubbler. You're going to put the stick down in there and you're going to zip tie it to the pump stick. We have the downflow and the bubbler stick in there now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole for the wires. This is where all your wires are going to come through so it looks clean.
Now we're going to install the upfloat. This one's very important that you put it in the right location because when it comes up, it's going to stop the water from coming into the holding tank. The bottom down float, you're going to want to make sure you have about three finger lengths apart from where you zip tie it at. Once you get it zip tied in, you're going to want to make sure you, you hold it up like that and make sure it's not going to overflow your tank. I'm going to go ahead and put one more zip tie in just to secure it. All these get trimmed down so they can't get caught on it. And then this gets screwed back in around the lip. And then right here, you're going to want to seal with some kind of heavy duty sealer. So no water gets in from your roof depending on where the tank's location is. quarter 90 and one inch reducer into the inch and a quarter 90 and you're going to stick it on you're going to make sure that it runs to the cabinet and parallel with the wires all right now you're going to pull them in straight down to our backwash tube you're going to disconnect what's existing and take this piece out they're just compression fitting so you just push down and pull and the piece will come out what you want to do is you're going to cut in to your pipe You're gonna glue, clean the T in. You're gonna take another piece of backwash tubing. You're gonna plug it into the backwash port, glue this in, cut down. And plug back in until you feel it pop. From the bottom of the backwash tee, we're gonna pull them down one inch pipe to a 90, and we're gonna bring one inch pipe out. back into the cabinet to drill another hole for the house feed. So with the hole we just drilled, we put a piece of one inch pipe in, a piece of pipe coming from the backwash tube in the, down the back of the cabinet, we're gonna tee in. Cleaner, glue, and then this is still coming out the side of the cabinet to your post filter. From the T, from the holding tank, and then the inside of the cabinet, we're going to 90 up. And once we 90 up, we're going to go into the post treatment filter. Led to the post treatment, and this is what's going to connect into your house. We're going to take the tricolor wire from the pump inside the tank and we're going to stick it in the cabinet in the hole that's pre-made for you. We're going to take the wire, we're going to take it around the membrane housing like so. So that way if you have any issues later, you can easily adjust them. You're going to bring it in here. Now we're back inside the cabinet. This is our second pressure tank we're going to plumb in. You need a one inch male adapter for down there in the bottom of the pressure tank. And then one inch pipe gets glued into that. We're gonna go one inch 90. And then we have our T with our pressure switch. What we're gonna do is the plastic nipple, one inch pipe, one inch T, reducers. Gets glued in there like that. This 90 gets glued in, cleaned, glued as well. Make sure the pressure switch is facing back just like it is. Once you have your wires prepped, they get screwed to the inside of the switch. The pump inside of the tank gets screwed into the inside of the switch.
220 sideways prong pigtail is going to get wired into the outside of the switch in the same fashion. So your other wire coming through the back of the cabinet is your 110 booster pump wire. You're going to find your 110 yellow upfloat wire as well, piggyback. You're going to plug them in together and then they're going to get plugged directly into the 110 into the wall. The 220 plug that you just wired into the switch in the cabinet, you're going to plug into the, down, the black down float in the bottom of the holding tank. Same same fashion. They piggyback off each other and get plugged into the 220. Bubbler line install. Bubbler line. Install. Oh, hello there. Now that you have completed the whole home RO install, you should be able to enjoy better than bottled water from every tap. If you have any questions, please call 239-599-8873. Thank you.